Hey guys, welcome back to a new video, new vlog. And if you watched the last episode, Ben and I did this little truck top, truck top episode one. So this is episode two. We're coming back from a banger of a shed trip, which by the way, uh, Ben will have videos on his YouTube channel, which is in the description box. And then Hush is where all my shed hunting and shed tour videos will live. But with that being said, we wanna do truck talk episode two. And we were just having a good conversation on this long journey home. And I was like, dude, I'm getting out my phone. This is exactly the stuff I love to talk about. And I think people enjoy these conversations. So the topic was Ben quitting his job five years ago to go full-time YouTube. And basically at the time, it was really to be a full-time shed hunter. Right. So it's a pretty cool story. I'm gonna let Ben take over the vlog, but uh, I wanted to share this with you guys because it's really inspiring. And just reflecting back on it now because it's that five-year mark and when you do something like that it's always like man you know where am I gonna be in five years like you're gonna know if you're doing something right or if you got to go get another job Vince <laughs> he's not getting another job so he's doing really well I'm gonna give him the spotlight right now but we're gonna talk on betting on yourself and taking a risk yeah so um, yeah five years is crazy uh, to, to be doing this that long it's kind of wild to look back on but so when I decided I was gonna do this, like luckily I had a little bit of momentum going and it helped make the decision easy for me. But the, what me and Eric were kind of talking about really is just like the sacrifices you have to make early on in order to pursue something that you're actually passionate about. Um, when I decided I was gonna quit my job and do this full time, I knew there was gonna be a gap between earning money. I knew I was gonna have to wait a while before it started to pay me anything. I knew I'd have to grow my YouTube channel and figure out ways that it was gonna earn. I knew I could pick up a little bit of antler in the meantime to kind of like help us get by. But basically we had to look around at our circumstances and say, okay, we're all right living very simply, like having a very minimal lifestyle. Um, we lived in a basement apartment. Uh, we drove beater vehicles. We still drive beater vehicles. We just did what we had to do. And I looked around, you know, at that time and so many of my friends were driving brand new trucks. They were building houses, they were buying houses boats all that stuff and like yeah I wanted that stuff too you know like I wanted to have a nice truck but I think that I was just more willing to forego that in exchange for the lifestyle that I wanted and it's nothing against people who wanted to have nice things you know it's just where you put your priorities and those guys were happy in their jobs and that was all right I wasn't I wasn't happy I wanted to pursue something else so I think it's important to realize like if there is something that you want it might be uncomfortable for a long time to getting there because I look at this now I look at where I'm at in in my career and everything like I'm able to afford the lifestyle that I want now and do what I want and the cost of freedom to me was worth it um, it was worth more than cars it was worth more than houses just to be able to wake up every day and to do what I wanted so prioritizing that stuff can be tough sometimes and it can take a while but I think that you truly can get to the point where you have both you have the lifestyle that you want you have the things that you want, um, but it just comes through like weathering that storm and bridging the gap between those lifestyles. Really, it's kind of it's kind of cool. But I mean, you kind of did that in a way too. Like, yeah, like worked your way into it. Yeah, the thing that kind of hits hits me is um, like a lot of people want that instant gratification, and they're not willing to put in the time and the dedication for long-term gratification. And that goes for anything. But like Ben, um, I stayed debt-free. You know, a lot of people looked at my scenario, living in like a very small, tiny house, 99 Chevy pickup truck, 1995 Honda four-wheeler. And so <laughs> many people are like, what is this kid doing? Bro, he's, like, poor. He, he's poor. And I'll be honest with you guys, I did not make an honest wage, like a good household income wage until I was over 30 years old. And I'm talking like 20 grand to 25 was all I was making through my 20s. And trust me, that was tough. I mean, I it affected my dating life and, and women who, you know, were just kind of questioning like, is this guy going to ever be secure, financially secure? Is he ever going to be able to support a family? And I don't blame them. Like YouTube and content, all this stuff was brand new. There was no blueprint on how to make a healthy income being a shed hunter and going and documenting hunts and like putting them on YouTube. But like I just always knew like if there's somebody out there that can do it, if there's this industry, like why can't that be me? Um, so I 
I stayed debt free was the big thing. And like Ben, um, being debt free, I think, is what put us in the position to take the risk to, to really jump all in on this. Totally. Had we had those financial responsibilities of like a mortgage, a camp trailer, a boat, etc., like, yeah, that's going to drown you. And there's one quote that I took away from a job I had. It was like, how to get out of debt. It's called transforming debt into wealth. And it said, when you owe the banks, you have promised tomorrow's income away today. Like, let that sink in. I know two videos ago, I was talking about the food industry. Think about the banking industry. When you owe the banks, you have promised tomorrow's income away today. The money you haven't even earned you have already signed on the dotted line that you're gonna pay somebody that, you know, that monthly payment, that interest. And I think a lot of people, unfortunately, these days look at like debt is like, oh, it's $400, $500 a month to get that, that razor I want. And they're not looking at the long term like, okay, that's actually 20 grand plus interest over time is gonna equal 27 grand or whatever it might be depending on the rate. So I think just kind of what what we were just talking about was betting on ourselves, getting debt free, and really sacrificing a lot in a, in like those early stages to reach this point where it is your lifestyle and the freedom that comes with what we do, the opportunities. You know, obviously Ben and I have both been on hunts we probably would have never imagined we'd been on. For we'd sure, been able to meet and. Uh, build great friendships and business relationships through this whole process. So anyways, that's all I got to say for Truck Talk is just, I don't know, if you really want to take the, the jump and you got to set it up, right? Like you can't, you got to be a little bit strategic. There's a book that Brian really loves and he read it. It's called The 4-Hour Workweek. Mm -hmm. I haven't read it, but I know a lot of people who have and have really good things to say to it, but... But again, like Ben said in the first part, like there's a lot of people who are very happy with their jobs, they're making a great living, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that either. But if you're not happy, it's right. time to start thinking about, you know, taking care of yourself first. Yeah, definitely. And start thinking about your time as money. Thinking about like how much time it really costs you to get that new thing. You know, if you think about it in days of your life traded for possessions, it becomes pretty wild. You know, if, if there's a truck that costs $10,000 and you have to finance that truck, you're promising five years of your life. You're promised to work five years of your life for a truck that, you know, costs ten dollars or $20,000. Where if you can afford to pay cash for a $5,000 truck and drive it for that same five years, yeah, it's not going to be as nice. It's not going to be as reliable. You have some repairs. But, like, really, I've been driving a $5,000 truck for four years I've put a couple thousand dollars into it and it's not having a truck payment has allowed me to go on so many more trips hunts buy tags gear things I never would have been able to otherwise because I don't have to make a four or five hundred dollar a month truck payment so anyway it's a lot of financial um, stuff that we're talking about here today but even small changes can be applied to any budget any lifestyle any disc any I mean anything that you guys have going on like can apply this kind of method of minimalistic thinking to it and, and it'll help a lot. I'm only saying that because it's worked for me, not because I'm a financial guru by any means. It's, this is just what's worked for us. So hope you guys enjoy these truck talks. Hope you guys truck enjoyed talk. this and chatting with me and EC. This is what we talk about when we're on these 12 hour drives to and from shit hunting. So thank you guys for being here and I hope you enjoyed it. All right guys, Ben said we had to stop here and walk over this bridge. This is the Colorado River? Yeah, it's just one of my favorite bridges because I'm so scared of heights. <laughs> I love to walk out there and look off of it. Just like try to give myself some therapy. We're just driving home from our shed hunt and I've got some sheds to show you guys when we get to Ben's house to unload them. But let me, uh, let me just film this. So it's a Navajo bridge, a little info there. <laughs> Holy cow. All right, don't drop the phone. Dude, get down from there, bro. Oh, holy crap. Oh, it freaks me out, bro, so bad. <sighs> Take a breath. Take a big breath. Get up on the rail. Don't be there, dude. Get down from there.
Guys, this is wild. Super pretty. I had a dream that um, somebody fell off the bridge like two nights ago. Two nights ago? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Last you, night we were in the you got some weird dreams, man. There's a bridge to drive over. Can you? How many of you guys are uh, scared of heights? Okay, we're just divvying up sheds. Don't steal my sheds, bro. Bro, I want um, anything brown. Five, white, five points mine for sure. This one right here with the huge devil tie. That one. Yeah, there. look at this set I found, man, guys. Boy. Boom. Sweet, bro. Okay, so that side is like untouched, one year old in the pondies. And then, unfortunately for me, his match was destroyed by the rodents. Look at this one. Like every point was just destroyed. Big devil tine too. Super cool bull. Nice white burr. And then, uh, yeah, we got a mixed bag. I got this brown. God, I gritted this ridge for that one. Got this little tiny brown from a couple days ago. This one was yesterday. I didn't realize just looking at all these, just how busted up they are. Yeah. Like a right. lot of them. Mm -hmm. This is actually a pretty cool set. Hold these up, Ben. So those Good were ball. side by side in the bushes. It's just kind of disappointing because you lose the swords and you lose so much of the look. Dude, of the, the sword bull. makes it look so weak without him. But he's a nice bull and he's really dense antlered. Yeah. Dude, I want to go pick up the Megas. Yeah. So Ben's got a set here that your uncle found? Yep. Guys, let me show you this thing. I'm going to hold them up for you. Be all right all right all right literally one of the baddest sets of elk antlers i've ever held that are out of utah seriously look at that thing and then there's this one that's a small side bro oh my gosh those are so heavy ben those things just look heavy they are so huge they're pretty wild so you might be able to find match Look at that. that. Thank you, man. Nice set to it. Yeah. Yeah, nice addition. But anyway, this is one of my favorite elk sets I've ever held, and they are probably the heaviest, densest antler I've got. They're my dope. My hands on in a long, long time. Yeah. <laughs> Things are huge. No, there's plenty of room. Some good dog chews in this stack for me. Ooh, these, this is a good one-year-old antler. You can see how much the rodents have chewed on it, but it still has plenty left over for good dog chews. And uh, I just have to work around this stuff. Usually I'll cut the bad stuff off and give it to friends, but that'll be perfect for dog chew. Hey, hey guys, made it home back uh, at the house here in Salt Lake, and I'll tell you what, beautiful day. I wish I was out finding sheds, but after a push like that, you definitely can use a little rest and recovery. But I've got my spread out, and let me show you what I got. I know you've seen most of them, but we'll walk through them real quick. Some whites, I got a set to that, single, single set right there. Uh, match to that, single, single, big five match, and a uh, big brown. So. All these antlers right here are gonna be great for dog chews. The hard whites that are still solid are great for dog chews because nothing on the inside has been ruined or tainted. Um, the tines that have chew marks, I don't use those. Um, I'll usually give them to some friends and I always have lots of buddies with dogs and I'll usually pawn them off to them. The chews are great. I just like to use the best quality for the ones that people get on the store because as a customer, I'm sure you want the highest quality and the best looking dog to you when you know you pay full price so kind of where i'm at right now getting home and got some organizing to do in the shop some of uh, matt's pile is here but this is all this year's stuff the stuff that's in front so i'm going to add to that and maybe pick up the garage a little bit but when the weather is this nice and i can open up the door is my favorite it's actually cooler in here than it is outside because this is so well insulated so I'm just gonna get to work. Um, I typically pressure wash the antlers uh, before I cut them up for dog chews. Sometimes they just get muddy, dirty on the quad or the hike out. So I'm gonna spray them off real quick with my pressure washer. 
and uh, unload my truck. But man, I'm just happy to be home. It feels good, get a few days of rest, and then I'll probably get the itch to get back out there.